What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a video for you on a piece of software that I've been using for a couple of years now. Why? Well, because I've seen it on sale on the Humble Bundle. Having a look at this Humble Bundle store page over here, this was recently released, the best of Stardock 2020. If we scroll down to the very bottom, over here in the $15 package is Multiplicity 3. Basically, this piece of software, when run on two different computers, allow you to connect them together as if they were extra screens. On my main PC, I have three screens and I have my laptop next to me. If I move my cursor all the way to the left of my leftmost screen, it'll go ahead and go onto my laptop. I can then fully control it with my existing mouse and keyboard. And say you were to add five different computers, they'll all connect together and basically work as one interconnected system where you use one mouse and one keyboard to control as many different computers as you'd like. It's incredibly useful, however, it is a paid piece of software. While there are free projects that are similar to this, I won't be going through them in today's video. I'll be going through setting up and installing Multiplicity 3 on both your main PC, your secondary PC, connecting them together and getting audio to share from your secondary PC to your main one. And of course, if you have more than one computer, you can share audio between all of them to your main computer and you can share your mouse and keyboard between all of them as well. While I'm not sure if there's a trial version, I do own a key for it, so I will be putting a key into my main computer. However, I think it is also possible to run for free, though I have no idea. Either way, the first thing that you need to do is actually download Multiplicity. Once you get to this page over here by clicking the first link in the description down below, at the very top, we'll click try it free. This is just the simplest way to download it. As you can see, it's downloading already. After waiting three seconds, you'll see the download start down here, and they've got a nice little diagram showing you where the download will be for different browsers. We'll go ahead and click on it so that it opens once it's done. Then when prompted for admin, I'll hit yes, and then we'll get this pop-up over here. So I'll say, I agree, next, and I'll leave it to install to the default place, next. And then we'll see it run through as such, and we'll get to the screen over here. So what well, there's the answer to my previous question. Yes, there is a 30 day trial. However, I'll be entering my product key now. After I click activate, you see this over here and I can go to finish. Then we'll see this pop up over here. In the top right, we can choose whether this is a primary or secondary computer. Secondary computers are the ones that we control remotely and primary ones are the ones that we have mouse and keyboards attached to. As far as I know, you can only have one primary, but you can have as many secondary computers as you want. And of course, the higher, more expensive versions of Multiplicity let you add far more computers. I don't know if it's limited to just this grid for this version over here. Either way, once you have it installed on your host computer, you'll need to head across to your secondary computer and install it there as well. While the process is incredibly similar, I'll simply just speed run through it. Yes is admin, I agree, next, next. Let it run through. And then this will pop up over here. So if you see this notification over here about your computer being on a quote unquote public network, you'll need to go ahead and change your network to private. Otherwise there may be issues with the Windows firewall. So I'll click yes to ignore this for now and we'll get the screen over here. So I'll click be a secondary computer because I want to control this virtual machine from my main one. Of course, if you're installing this on a physical machine, it'll be the same process. Then we'll leave this screen open over here. How exactly do we change the network location to private? Well, it's rather simple. Click the little network icon in your taskbar down here and we'll click on whatever network we're connected to. Then you'll see a pop-up like this. We'll click on it once again. And then you'll see these options up here, public and private. Simply just click private. Once you've done that, you can close out of this window and everything should be good. Right now, I'm gonna tab over to my main computer and I have my virtual machine over here. So to make this as simple as possible, I'll simply just push it down to the bottom left hand corner of my screen. Remember that this is your second computer. Tabbing back to my main computer over here, what we need to do is simply click the add computer button in the top right. Then you should already see the computer showing up via the network scan over here. So desktop 1BK and this is also desktop 1BK. So these are matching. You can either click it down here to enter the name automatically or you can enter it yourself. Then we'll hit add and we need to enter the passcode to prove that we actually own this computer. So F-X-I-C-L-T-K-T, -T, it says it over here. Then we can choose to lock it to this IP address, which I wouldn't recommend if your computer has a dynamic IP. Of course, if you don't know whether it's static or dynamic, you should leave this unchecked. Then if you wanted to and your device is connected via an ethernet, 
you can also enable wake on LAN. That means that when you move your mouse over to the side of the screen that your computer is on, it'll automatically wake up if it's sleeping. I don't want this on, so I'll leave both of those unchecked. Then of course you can change the display name over here, but I'll leave it as such. Then I'll hit save, and we've automatically added it next to our main computer over here. Now because I have three screens, you may be a bit confused as to where they are. Well, your computer over here is all of your screens connected, and this is its representation. Currently, if I move my mouse cursor all the way off to the right hand side of my screen, eventually it'll scroll onto this virtual machine over here. And if I were to move it to the left hand side, if I move my cursor all the way to the left, it'll scroll over onto this virtual machine. So in fact, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. This is set to the far left, so I'll bring up the screen over here, and I'll begin by moving my cursor all the way to the left of my screen, and as you can see it appears onto my laptop from the right hand side of the screen. If I were to go ahead and drag things around, you may see that things are a little bit laggy and delayed, but that's simply just because it's going through the network. Of course, if you're connected to your other computer via Wi-Fi, it may be even more delayed. However, the delay isn't really that bad. And at times, I can even play games if I wanted to, remotely controlling another computer with a shared mouse and keyboard. At this point, we can go ahead and start sharing audio from our second device, onto our main computer. How exactly do we do that? Well, we can head across to the audio tab on our secondary computer, then we can make sure enable audio sharing is checked, and we'll go to send audio to another computer. At this point, I'll have to bring my cursor back over to my main computer by bringing it to the far right as such, and then I'll come back to this page over here. Then I'll head into the audio tab, enable audio sharing, and we'll make sure that receive audio from other computers is selected. Then we'll have the name at the very bottom over here, and if we click this button down here, it'll show a passcode. Of course, you won't have one here to begin with, but you can click change receiver passcode, and you can enter your own password here as such. Once you have this on your screen, we'll move our cursor back to our secondary computer. Then we'll go ahead and enter some information here. So, desktop N29RPP3 and the passcode I entered was test123. Then I'll go to save changes, and it's basically completely set up at this point. If you want some more control over this, we can head into the advanced settings window, where you have some options over here. I'll go ahead and open up YouTube or something and queue up a video, and if I bring my cursor back over to my main computer, and of course you won't be able to see anything immediately, but if I bring this across over here, you can see in my sound mixer I have multiplicity audio, and this is the sound coming from my laptop. Of course, you can adjust the volume here, as well as adjusting the volume on the actual computer itself. You can simply do this with keys on your keyboard if you have them, or you can adjust them as you normally would there. This is just another bit of control that you can have over the audio. Pausing it and closing my browser, heading back here, I'll close out of the sound mixer, and that is basically it. Of course, if you wanted to, you can check out these settings so you can get a bit more control over the software, such as copying and pasting between computers. If we have a look in the hotkeys section over here, you can add hotkeys that let you instantly jump to the computer on the left or the right. So if you have a full screen game or something like that open, it'll leave it open and your mouse and keyboard will just be locked onto the other computer instead of your main one. And if I hit control five, like I've told it to, it'll instantly go across onto my secondary computer. And then in the about tab, we just have some information on the software and we can check for updates if we need. But other than that, if you'd like to save your settings, in the very top right, we can click the unlocked button and hit yes, and it's locked. From this point, we won't be able to adjust any settings, change anything, which is great for locking it so you won't accidentally change something. Of course, you can unlock it, hit yes, and you can move things around. Now, of course, if you want to close this at any point for any reason, we can check our tray in the bottom right, and we can look for the multiplicity icon. We can then right click on it, and click unload multiplicity for it to close and completely disappear off of our computer until we restart or we open up the multiplicity application once again. But anyways, that's about it. Thank you all for watching this crash course on Stardock Multiplicity. My name has been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.